I'm Gordon Schinkel, Production Superintendent of Cold Creek Mine. We'd just like to uh, talk about how we'd like the crew to operate the uh, MISA map and our expectations with the application. Uh, initially, when the iPads passed out at the beginning of the shift, we would like the operators to go ahead and log into the system and enter a crew meeting delay. Just single tap the far icon on the screen to open it up. Once it's open, you can put your username and password in. Now to do that, click into the box that has the username label in it. And that will open up the keyboard. Now my name is Daniel Moore, so I'm going to use the first initial of my first name and my full last name to log in. And it's all caps, so to get to the all caps you just double tap the up arrow quickly. So there I double tapped it and now it's locked into all caps. So D more. Now I'm going to tap into the password field and your password is your employee ID number. And then when you're done, click this minimize keyboard button in the bottom right hand corner and that'll drag the screen down and then click the login button. When you log into the Lightfleet management system, the first thing you want to do is set your status. So at the beginning of the shift, I'm going to change my status to dismount, none for machines, dismount for my sequence. I'm going to put myself into standby and select either meetings or shift change and then hit begin work. And then once the crew meeting is, is completed, you'll proceed to the ready line where you'll begin your pre-shift inspection. At that time you'll switch to a delay for the pre-shift inspection of your equipment. When I arrive at the machine, I'm going to change from dismount select my activity, select the machine that I'm running, select the beginning state, so the next state that I'm going to be in as soon as I drive away. So the next state, if you're from the ready line and you're traveling empty, will be arriving at shovel. Select your status. You're going to be initially on a delay. And you're going to be doing an inspection. And then hit begin work. You can hit dismiss on this tab. I've selected my machine. I've got my inspection delay on. So now I'm going to go back out to the main menu. The Electronic Document Manager is where we keep all of our documents. This window is telling us that the plus arrow in the upper right hand corner of the screen is where you create new documents. You can hit, just hit Dismiss. Folder on the left shows all forms. We have forms that have been completed and forms that are pending completion. Completed form sorts by forms that have been completed and submitted successfully. Pending forms show forms that are saved 
but not yet submitted. So now I'm going to create a new pre-operational inspection. I'm going to hit the plus in the upper right hand corner. And I'm going to open up the safety checklist. Okay, so once I have the safety checklist open, it will auto-populate my name. I can select the manager on the shift. And I'll select the equipment model and the equipment name. Odometer hours, depending on the rules on site, you can either leave those blank or fill them in. So this would either be the odometer reading or the engine hour meter reading. The MISMFAR is to indicate if there's a problem with your system. So if you're missing a charger or there's something wrong with the device itself, mark that bad order and then enter the notes down below as to what those are. So if you're in a situation where you have an item that you don't want to mark good because a haul truck wouldn't have a blade or a ripper and you don't want to mark it bad, we have a column for not applicable. This is a column all the way to the right for NA. So just go ahead and mark that not applicable. I'm going to mark the glass as broken in bad order because there's a chip in the windshield. And in addition, I'm going to go ahead and take a, uh, take a photo of this. So there's my photo in the bottom left hand corner attached. So I've completed and filled everything in. I'm going to go ahead and open up the toolbar one more time. If you wanted to, you could add a geotag. That puts the latitude and longitude on the form itself. And now I'm going to sign the form. accept the signature, and save the document. Form has been successfully saved. Now that it's been saved, I'm going to submit. So now the form has been saved and submitted, and I can reopen it later on. So now I'm going to go back to my machine, open up Light Fleet Management, Now we're still in the original delay of our inspection. So now we're going to remove the delay, go to ready, 533 coal, and we are ready to go. and proceed to your shovel that you're assigned or the loading unit you're assigned to. Once you arrive at your loading unit, we want you to input the uh, components to start the loading cycle. So you would select your material type to the location and the loading unit. If you know the material you're going to be loading and the location you're going to be loading out of, you can set that at this point in time.
Here, here's some of the examples of why we want to collect as much data during the shift as possible. By collecting the data and knowing what state we're in, or what delay we're in, or what delays during the process we're encountering, that'll give us opportunities to address those issues, which will in increase our productivity and also to reduce our costs. Uh, we want to make sure that when we go down for a delay, once that delay is over, go back to your production codes. The other thing we want to do is make sure that as we go through our states during the loading process that we advance through those states. I'm going to change from a delay to ready. And then I'm going to set my work code. And in this case, it's going to be 533 coal. My first activity is arriving at shovel. As I click the button at the bottom right hand corner, it says next task, arriving at shovel. Then I start next task is start spotting start loading end load arrive at dump and end dump when I arrive back at the shovel we increase our cycle count by the count of one and at this point arriving at, at the shovel we have an opportunity to tap and then change the location. So if we're changing our shovel at this point in time, let's say we're switching from shovel 14 to shovel 13, we hit dismiss. So change your shovel when you arrive at the shovel. Change the location if you're at a different location. Let's say we're at 1 West and our material is R1 coal. At the end of shift, when you get off the machine, change your machine from haulage to dismount. Machine is none. Your starting sequence is dismount. Your status code is standby. And then you'll select shift change and hit begin work. Now you want to let this run from the time you get off the machine until you get back into the office. To measure that shift change time. Once you get into the office, hit the go back button and the last thing that you'll capture before you go home is exit FARA. It'll pop up and say do you want to quit FARA? Yes or no? And it'll say yes. And it will connect to the server and then say goodbye. So when you see goodbye, you know that you've done your job, you've clocked out, and all of your information has been captured up to the server. It's very important that we, we try to log into the system at the very start of our shift while we're in the lineup meeting. By logging in during the lineup meeting, that allows us to capture the start of the shift, and then as we progress through the, through the inspection and then to the equipment, and our state changes, we come back in at the end of shift, we need to make sure that we're logging out of the system once we arrive back at the change house at the end of the shift.